So this video, the idea behind this is to, you know, to help you pick if you're if you're on a budget or you're buying buying rod and reels for your kids or husband, whoever, and you're like, man, I, I, I can afford to get three or four or two or what, you know, I want to get them a couple really good setups. What should I do that they could do almost anything with? And I, my intent was to do pick three. I couldn't do that, so I did. I, I did pick four. Um, was what I was what I ended up going with, and that's for me. That's really hard. Um, I'd rather pick about eight. But would make it a lot a lot better um, just for me because I'm so specific a lot of times on what I like to fish stuff on. But this would be a an excellent place to begin um, as any angler. These four rod and reel combinations, and I'll be brand specific in them. But more than anything, I want you to pay attention to the action of the rods, the length of the rods, and the gear ratio of the reel that I'm matching them up with. Um, and that will help you determine, you know, something that's gonna be great for a lot of different situations. I'm gonna go from the shortest rod that I've got in the mix up to the longest rod. And then here's the other part of that. Rod length, a big thing with that, just thinking about where you're gonna be fishing those particular baits. Are you you're gonna be out in the middle of the lake trying to make as long a cast as you possibly can? Or are you gonna be a lot of times near targets, near cover, where distance isn't as important as accuracy is? That's a lot of the things that I think about when I'm fishing a, uh, you know, when I'm trying to determine the length of the rod that I'm gonna use. The other factor with that, and with the rod I'm gonna start with, is actually working the bait. So this is a rod that I'm gonna use, a jerk bait, a topwater bait, stuff where I have to put a lot of action and actually working the rod down towards the water um, to work the bait with. If you try to do this with a seven and a half foot rod, you'd need to be seven and a half feet tall to keep the rod out of the water all the time. So I'm about six feet, a rod that's like six three, six six. This is actually a six six medium action. Um, this is a Johnny Morse Patriot rod, but this is a great rod for me for fishing top water baits, for fishing a jerk bait. Um, same exact action I'm gonna use, same exact rod I'm gonna use for top waters, jerk baits. And that's anything from a you know from a full size jerk bait like a a 110 size, a magnum size down to a you know a real small jerk bait like a X Trap 8 or something. And same with my walking baits, a big walking bait, a small walking bait, poppers, prop baits, all of that stuff. I'm going to throw on this rod and reel here, a 6 8 to 1 gear ratio reel. This is a Johnny Morris Platinum reel, um, and all my rod and reels always have reel grips on them. But a 6 8 to 1 gear ratio is, is all you need for fishing that type of stuff. You know, jerk bait, top water, those type of things. 6 8 to 1 gear ratio is plenty good. One major difference though, if I'm fishing a jerk bait on this, I'm going to have fluorocarbon line on it. If I'm fishing a top water bait, I'm going to have braided line. I may have a monofilament leader, I may not. Just kind of depends on if it's really clear water and those fish seem to be a little bit line shy. But that's the biggest difference. Same rod, same reel just different line if I want top water or if I'm fishing a jerk bait on it. Moving up, um, I, I, in the spirit of this, of picking, you know, picking a minimum amount of rods for a crankbait, I went with one that's, that would work for all around purposes. And so I aired a little bit on the shorter side. You know, a 7.6 is something I use a lot, um, especially on bigger, deeper baits, but for an all around crankbait rod, a seven foot medium heavy action Bass Pro crank and stick is really, really hard to beat. I can catch fish on, you know, really shallow baits. I can, I can pick up a big deep crankbait and it's enough rod to make a good long cast with that and get it out there plenty far enough. So seven foot medium heavy action um, the, of the Bass Pro crank and stick, same reel. That's a six, eight to one um, Johnny Morse platinum reel. But all of my crankbait fishing is going to be done with fluorocarbon line. Never any less than 10, and 10 is on the, on the very low end of the spectrum that I'll ever use. 12 and 14 is what I use the vast majority of the time. Occasionally I'll step that up to 17. But a 7 foot medium heavy cranking stick, if you wanted to buy one crankbait rod, that would be the one to buy. You could also use this exact same setup for bladed jig. Works really, really well for that. Um, forever I fished a bladed jig on the same rod reel that I use a spinnerbait with, that's definitely a mistake. A cranking stick is definitely the rod for a bladed jig. Speaking of a spinnerbait, the next one in the lineup, 
This is what you would call an all-purpose rod. This is a carbon light, seven foot, medium heavy action. This thing, you can fish just about anything on this. You can throw a crankbait on it. You can throw a worm on it. You can skip a jig on it. This is a great all purpose rod. Um, what I use it the most for though is a spinner bait, a buzz bait. As I mentioned, I used to throw a bladed jig on it, but I prefer the crank and stick for that now. Um, casting a jig, casting a worm, all that stuff works really, really well on this rod. That seven foot medium heavy is always a great all purpose rod. Um, not a lot that you're gonna do that, that will be really completely wrong with it. On this one, I do step up in speed just a little bit. That's a Johnny Morse carbon light reel as well, seven five to one gear ratio. And depending on what I'm using, you know, spinner bait, buzz bait, I'm gonna have that on fluorocarbon, typically 17 pound test. If I wanted to, you know, if I was fishing a, a swim jig and heavier cover, I would probably go with braid, go with some 50 pound hyper braid. Um, you know, so different situations, depending on the bait I'm using, whether I'm gonna use braid or fluorocarbon on this particular setup. The last one, um, this one is gonna be the workhorse of the bunch. Any of your, your heaviest cover stuff, um, stuff that you, you know, pitching around, that kind of stuff. Is this a rod I, I would want to punch with? No. Is it a rod I could punch with? Yes. It, it's something that you could definitely um, get a fish out of heavy cover, really heavy grass in. For me, it's perfect for throwing a frog, throwing a swim jig. Um, I'll throw a, a football jig, a big worm on it out deep. It's a great rod for longer casts and fish that are in heavy cover. Um, but it's definitely, I mean, you could throw a jig around docks on it. You could flip into heavier grass with it, but this is a 7.3 carbon light, medium heavy action rod. Again, that seven five to one gear ratio reel. That's a fast enough reel um, that you can take up line quick with. If you wanted to step up to an eight three to one on this particular setup to have, you know, if these were gonna be your four, it definitely wouldn't be a bad idea if you were gonna put a real fast reel on one of them, that this be the one to put that eight three to one gear ratio on. So if you you kind of could cover the bases with those, you know, really with those four from a, a six six for your top waters jerk baits, a crankbait rod to cover all your crankbait fishing as well as your bladed jigs, and then a all purpose seven foot medium heavy, and then up to a seven three. If you wanted to go with the platinum series, they've got a seven four in that lineup and uh, and have your fastest, you know, possibly put an eight three to one gear ratio reel on that one. But those four setups, man, you could take those, use almost anything on them and definitely be successful.